Hey, what's going on my friends and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Victor and today I'm going to share with you five things I think you should know about the upcoming super full moon happening on October 17th, 2024. In spite of what you might be seeing online, for what it's worth, I strongly believe this full moon is extremely positive. It's extremely expansive. I think this is like a time of a rebirth, of really coming into a new level of our power, of our purpose, a, a, a greater depth of alignment with who we truly are, our infinite wisdom, our soul's essence. And I think this is just the beginning of a really positive era in a lot of our lives. Now I know you're thinking, Vic, the world's going crazy. What are you talking about? I hear you. But in this big world, there's a lot going on, both dark and light. And what I've noticed, and maybe you can share something otherwise, but I've noticed that the degree in which I become aware of the darkness, the more in your face the corruption and destruction and stuff like that is, to that degree, there seems to be this inverse correlation with my uh, spiritual growth, how connected to source I feel, my own sort of personal breakthroughs in a very positive opposite side of the spectrum sort of way. So I know the world is going through its thing, but I ask you, how are you feeling? And I know you're probably feeling a bit nutty, so that's okay too. But do you or do you not sense it's leading you somewhere positive? Do you feel that? Do you feel your life is unfolding in perfect synchronicity to lead you into a greater place of empowerment, a greater place of purpose, more you, more light, more love, grounded in your physical vessel so that you can actually make a change and influence this world that is in desperate need of people like you, seekers like you. So you may have seen some fearful warning type of messages online. I'm just going to tell you straight up. This is not going to be one of them. I see good things happening. The challenges, yes. Change, transformation, it's not comfortable. We know that. This is nothing new. But I see an extremely positive result and I cannot wait to get into this reading. Theme number one, I wrote down entering a new era. You maybe can sense this. Can you? Can you sense that? I usually use the word chapter here, but I wanted to switch it up, but it's kind of the same thing. Like there's been a chapter in your life and it's coming to an end on kind of a larger macrocosmic sort of way. For example, I just turned 40 this, this past year and I'm finding myself entering a brand new era with different interests, different themes I'm exploring, requiring me to kind of adapt to the new older body and this new era of my life. I'm having to make changes in the things I'm investing my time into. My interests are changing. My hobbies are changing. My priorities, my values, all of this is in this state of flux. And I know that during these chapter changing times, it's not like as simple as flipping a page. It kind of is, but it's as if you were to flip the page extremely slowly and you were comfortable in this chapter. You finally got the hang of things. You finally found yourself and you found your place and all of a sudden someone's slowly changing the chapter and you're like, oh God, everything's changing. I don't know, you wanna peek, what, what's next? You, you don't know what's next. All you know is the energy is changing, you are changing, circumstances are changing, things, people, jobs are falling out of your life or at least attempting to. You find yourself in this slowly turning page wondering what the heck is going on maybe even grieving the old chapter. It can be kind of sad when it's time to move on. It reminds me of like quitting a job. Ever done that where you quit a job and you're like, thank God, I cannot wait to move on to this better job. And, and for a while, maybe you were, you were just not happy at your job. But when it comes down to that last day or that last week, you start seeing it with like these nostalgic eyes. Like, oh man, I'm gonna miss this water dispenser and the talks I had with these people I don't care that much about, but you just start to like feel this sadness, this grieving of the old. But 
what I used to be guilty of doing is getting kind of stuck in that and seeing it as a reason not to move on. But every time that page finally turns over, there's always something cool. There's always something new and exciting. There's so much to experience in this life. There's no point. We're, we're, we're depriving ourselves if we hang on to the old and familiar. Reminds me of one time, a couple, a few years ago, maybe two, year, maybe two years ago. I don't know exactly, it doesn't matter. I was grieving, I was, I was going through this type of thing with my children. My children now are, I'm blessed to say, my, my daughter's 15 and then 11 and then nine. My, my kids, two boys, are the youngest ones. And I was going through this, this stage a couple of years ago when my middle son, Lucas, was getting older. And I just saw it. If you have kids, you know, sometimes you, just, you come to, out of your room that morning, it's like a new day and you see your kids and all of a sudden they're like an inch taller. They're, they're, they're using words you've never heard them use before and it's like, boom, they just jump into this new, they just grow up so quickly. And I found myself feeling very sad because all of a sudden, Luke is spending more time alone and spending less time with dad. He's not just following me around like a puppy anymore, which is good, but I was sad. I was like, man, I, 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 miss, I miss those times, you know? And I was kind of like really down on myself. And then that same night, I happened to be planned to go to a rock and roll concert to see my, one of my favorite bands, Tool. And my buddy uh, wasn't able to come or something, and I had this extra ticket. And I, and I, and I was like, oh God, what am I gonna do? Am I gonna go alone? You know? And then I decided, I looked at my son Lucas, who again, all of a sudden looked older, and I said, huh, interesting. I bet Luke's of age. It was Guns N' Roses, not Tool, actually, now that I think of it. He's never been to Tool. But I was like, hey, bro, you want to come to uh, see GNR tonight? He's like, yeah, you know, he's all excited. And it turns out we had the, the best time. My son Luke now is an absolute rocker. We both play guitar. We love rock and roll. And there's this entirely new chapter that's open of a lifetime of us seeing killer rock shows that just sort of came about after I let go of him, you know, getting older. So what I, what, that was a big lesson to me that there's no point of holding on, Vic. There's always another chapter and you never know what's in store. Usually it's really nice and really cool, especially if you're living your life consciously and making the internal shifts. All these changes are almost always positive, even though in the beginning they don't always seem that way. So nonetheless, I'm just sort of discussing this. I have no advice for you except just want to talk about it because I know it's... Uh, we don't like change. Most of us don't like change. Most of us resist change. But uh, I know usually in spite of how it can feel sometimes, usually when I tune into myself, I can sense that this change is going to be positive. This change is going to benefit me. It's going to be right for me. I'm going to be happy with this change. And I ask you, how do you feel? Are you going through this entering a new era phase as well? I'd be curious to hear in the comments below. Number two is shedding childhood reactions. This is a good thing, but it might be uh, catalyzed by witnessing yourself reacting to circumstances in a unconscious and childish way. It's a very interesting thing when you start to wake up to what drives you into the way your brain ticks. And when you sort of observe yourself having these sometimes out of place emotional responses to various circumstances in your life. And in the, in the beginning, it can be kind of confusing and just feel like you're, you have a lot of resistance, like you have a lot of anxiety maybe. But this full moon, this super moon, it's good because it can really like turn a light on and shine a light into that resistance and show you what it is. And a lot of times what it is, it's like the remnants of a pattern that your little child self set in motion that has absolutely nothing at all to do with who you are now and where your life is now. I'll give an example. I joined uh, jujitsu recently. I've trained off and on in the last 10 years. But I joined this new badass gym and I went a couple times and it was so fun and I loved it. And then I, I, you know, I, I had to travel or something. And then I, I found it really hard to go back that third session. And every time I would think about going, I felt this resistance. I felt like on one hand, I know I like jujitsu. I know it's fun. I mean, I was drawn to it in a real, real organic way. But on the other hand, I felt this heaviness. This just part of me that, that was like, I don't want to go. It feels uncomfortable, that type of thing. 
And I sat with it, and I, because I, I was curious. I was like, why don't you want to go do this thing you love to do? And then these two words popped in my head. Partner up. You have no idea what that means. I'll tell you, don't worry. Um, partner up. In jujitsu class, the way, at least the way I, where I go, the way it runs is you warm up and then you learn a technique and then the, the head sensei says, okay, partner up. They actually do this. They say, okay, they do this, partner up. And what that brought me back to was grade school in circumstances when the teacher said partner up and the feelings I felt, the feelings of unworthiness and nobody wants to be my partner. I remember feeling I wish to God they would just put me with somebody, but they didn't. I'd have to choose a partner or potentially not be chosen at all and be that kid left, left, left with like on a partner that's got to work with a teacher or something. And it was just a, a dreadful, uncomfortable experience. But I realized, but it was it, looking back at that, I can have compassion for my younger self. At the same time, I'm not like a little kid anymore fighting for social status in third grade. It doesn't matter at all. And I'm a paying customer. They, they, I should, they should just give me a partner if I don't have one. It shouldn't be a big deal. But upon examining and I was able to kind of see it's not a big deal. And I, I would bet that might be the case for you as well. If you're feeling resistance, whether it's to do something you want to do or resistance for no reason. A friend of mine I was talking to, he's been dealing with like annoying landlords and things like that. And they're kind of on the surface, these stressful situations, you could say. But he, he was talking to me. He was saying he was really responding in a way that was like with a lot of fear. Like a lot of fear of this perceived authority figure not being pleased with, you know, the way he took care of the house or something, even though he takes care of the house. He has these crazy landlords. He always does. But the point is, he was able to observe um, his sort of over-the-top emotional reaction that also stemmed from early childhood. And unfortunately, unexamined, these, er, these, these outdated emotional responses stop a lot of people from living the life they could be living. And luckily, it just takes a little bit of peering into oftentimes to see the writing on the wall, which is this has no grounding in reality. There's no reason for this to stop me. A lot of times our, our, our big fears are completely illogical and they have no business stopping us. And it's kind of one of those things where once you see it, you can never unsee it. I can never tell myself going to jujitsu is uncomfortable. I know it's because of this childhood thing. I know that now. And ever since it's been, it's been fairly easy to go. So what childhood reactionary type of patterns are you in the process of shedding? What is your reality conspiring to show you? about yourself that may be outdated. Number three, slowing down. This was inspired by one of my favorite tarot decks, the, uh, the Osho Zen Tarot. And it said this turtle and it says slowing down. Now I'd always be super upset when I would see that card because I'm not the type of guy that likes to slow down. I like to be doing stuff. I like to be very active. But slowing down doesn't have to be, doesn't have to mean like stalling your plans, prolonging your dreams, waiting. It doesn't have to mean that. Slowing down, oftentimes I find when it's time for me to quote unquote slow down, usually I find myself excited and intrigued by something that will benefit me, that is sort of, a, that represents rest, replenishment, nourishment, etc. And what I find is that this old quote I heard from, a, I, read in a, I read in a book said by this famous archer, you know, people that shoot bows and arrows. There's this really cool quote that says, slow is smooth and smooth is fast. So slowing down doesn't have to mean going slow. Oftentimes it's the exact opposite. I went to Six Flags yesterday with a good buddy of mine 
and my friend is building this webinar and he's like a younger guy and he's, he's like launching his business and he's, he's kind of where I was years ago in like work mode, grind mode, building up his, his, his thing. And uh, he said it was difficult for him to justify going to Six Flags, which took pretty much all day. It's like a two hour drive just to get there. When he had all his work to do, but he decided to do it because he felt intuitively that it was actually the most productive thing to do because he was feeling kind of, uh, you, you can only work hard so much before the quality diminishes big time. And you're not really getting yourself very far or very quick, even though you're exerting lots of energy. It's like a race car. You ever watch a, a, a race? I never do, but I, I understand the idea. They race around the track more a few times and they come on in for a pit stop. Even though the other cars are out there racing around, they, they take time out, they get their tires looked at, whatever, whatever goes on there, the pit stop allows them to be faster, to, to cover more ground, more distance, more quickly, and so does slowing down. And it's hard sometimes, these full moons and eclipses we just came out of, they can be very activating. They can kind of ignite a fire under your behind and make you eager to pursue these positive changes you're trying to bring into your life, whether it has to do with finding your purpose or a new career or a new whatever. And uh, also it can agitate you like what I was saying before and bring up all these feelings causing you to want to kind of run from yourself and we can become overactive very easily. Also, I found that when you, uh, when you have a lot of spiritual energy, which you could call like chi or kundalini, a lot of, a lot of that sort of uh, subtle energy flowing through your body, it's kind of like a, like a drug almost, but it can really burn you out because what goes up must come down. So now's the time I really believe we're, we're really in the process of emerging into this new level of ourselves. And if you, like me, find yourself drawn to things, like for me, I've been doing a lot of foam rolling and, and stretching, things like that, that I haven't been very good at doing. But I, it's exciting to me, I'm drawn to it. If you are drawn to something like maybe a, a yin yoga class or a singing bowl meetup group, whatever it is, you know, you know, I might get this meditation app with called Muse where you get to like monitor your, your, your brain wave. Well, whatever it is, slowing down can be something like the next thing you're drawn to that you're excited about. And you know you would definitely benefit from this if your body is telling you to slow down, if you're feeling fatigued, if you're feeling overwhelmed. A lot of times we feel overwhelmed when we think we need to be doing more than we need to be actually, that is actually balanced for us, that is actually ideal for us. So now the time to really kind of look at your habits, your lifestyle, the pace you're setting for yourself. Is it ideal? And it might require some like minor fine tuning and adjustments, but in the end you're gonna feel better and you're gonna move a lot faster. Number four, I believe maybe the underlying theme, the like maybe the the overarching result of these few things especially is because it's a time to really pursue our purpose, also our power and potential. It's a time of expanding. It's a time of living in a way that is representative of like who we've become, who we've grown into, who we've discovered ourselves to be. And that can require a lot of change, a lot of upgrades, a lot of falling out, a lot of pers going into the unknown, it's, it's, un it's uncomfortable. At the same time, it's, uh, it's not, it doesn't make sense, it's not necessary to fear. A lot of people, but I found, and also myself, are not so much afraid of failing, even though that's what they think. They think, I don't want to write this book, because what if no one write, likes it? That's one thing. But I, I found that what's even a more stifling type of fear is the fear of success, the fear of the things we want. And that brings it all the way back to worthiness. Can I handle it? Can I handle the pressure, the responsibility? It seems dicey <laughs> to, to do that. I'd rather just stay here playing it small, quietly content, at the same time, that's not you anymore. 
And even though it is scary, it is the unknown. You don't know. You, you, you can't lie to yourself and say, I know I can handle it. You can pretend to brainwash yourself with affirmations, but at the end of the day, your brain knows. You have not done this before. You don't know. You don't know. <gasps> it's scary. At the same time, to stay playing it small, still, in greater awareness of who you become, it's like a... It's like a dark ideal. It's almost like you're like a walking dead. You're not really alive. You're just kind of existing. And that there's like a slower, dull ache of depression and just discontentment that I find worse. I find worse. That, that, that really, that sense of not being in alignment to me is brutal. More brutal than the scary, crazy unknown. And it seems so illogical, doesn't it, that we're afraid of our power? I want the success, Vic. I want the abundance. I want the soulmate. I want the amazing relationships. I want the amazing body. I want the whatever it is. We want that. We tell ourselves that. In fact, I remember back in high school, I was uh, working out a lot. And that was like my thing. And I was, I was a lot bigger than I am now even. Um, not that I'm huge or anything, but I was in really, really good shape for like an 11th grade kid. And one time I stumbled into the bathroom. I was at a house party and I was, we were all drinking and stuff. And I stumbled into the bathroom and I saw myself in this mirror that I normally didn't see myself in. It was like a, my friend's mirror or something. And I was like, holy crap. I noticed how big I looked. And it was kind of like all those workouts, the blood, the sweat, and the tears, the discipline, the going to the gym after school. My friends were out partying. All of that finally paid off. And I had this like physique that I was like striving for and visualizing and working towards. But when I finally saw it for the first time in the mirror, I felt anxiety. I felt, I felt afraid. I felt like, I don't want to, this, this makes me stand out, I thought. You look different now. You're going to stand out. This is not good. And I became anxious and afraid at finally getting to where I thought I wanted to get. And I see that happening all the time. It happened to me also with YouTube. I remember one of my first viral videos, I was sitting outside of Starbucks and I was like, I was like checking out, I was like scrolling on my phone to see how it was doing and it was, it was going nuts. It was an old energy update. And that was also something I've been working towards. And the moment I saw that happening, I had this not wave of anxiety, but it was a wave of terror. It was like my, my body, I almost had a panic attack because with success, comes responsibility with success with, with success comes pressure the pressure to deliver the pressure to live up to the standard that people now have of you and also the standard you have set for yourself at the same time how are we to really gain that confidence in ourselves if we don't give ourselves a chance we'll never know if we can handle it if we don't allow ourselves to try. And what I found is that when you get into a new level of yourself, a new level of responsibility, usually there are a lot of mistakes. Your brain is correct. I might make a mistake. You'll probably make more. You'll probably make a whole bunch of mistakes. You fall, you stumble, you make stupid rookie mistakes because it's new to you, new territory. But you learn. That's how you learn. That's how you become comfortable in this new situation until it's time to do this over and over and over again. It's how life can go when you allow yourself to expand. So as strong as this fear might be, it's one of those ones I found I just have to walk through. A lot of people I find they try to solve it. They try to fix it. They try to heal it. They try to understand it, try to remove it so they can sort of take this big step in more of a comfortable fashion. But it's one of those things that you just kind of have to do in order to feel better. And if you can allow yourself to make mistakes, then there's really nothing stopping you. And finally, number five, global awakening. What I mean by that is that I believe there are times where not just us as individuals, but the collective experience like waves of awareness 
where all of a sudden you just start to like see yourself and see reality in a brighter light and start to kind of form these connections. And what I'm trying to say is like, you could look out in the world right now and it looks like we are doomed on all, all levels. And you look at the climate, you look at the way we're living, you look at how many people are on the planet, you look at the politics, all these things. It's like anywhere you look, the future looks extremely grim. And I think that is a sign, believe it or not, not a sign, but like indicative of just how positive the transformation we are experiencing right now is. I just read this book called uh, Good Energy, really good book by this, uh, this doctor, this woman, I think something Casey. And one of the final things she was talking about is meditation. And she said that a lot of people don't, don't meditate because they feel like they're not doing a good job because the brain is so active. But her and a lot of, a lot of other meditation teachers say the same thing. But what, they were, what she was saying is that meditation is not necessarily about quieting your mind. It's about noticing your thoughts. So it's like you're sitting there, you're meditating, and then you start trailing off. And you, if you catch yourself, that's consciousness. That's meditation. That's awareness. Awareness. And I think if we are going to clean up this mess of a planet, we, we, we need to know what kind of mess we're involved in. And right now, there's a lot of information being kind of beamed at us. And I think collectively people are starting to, I know they are, they're starting to kind of wake up. The things that were once seen as these like wild conspiracies 10 years ago, it's, it's becoming kind of more so common knowledge, even among people who are not necessarily drawn to videos like this. And I think that from all this information, we can make a lot of positive change in our lives and in ourselves. And I think it's just a necessary thing. So also I find this awareness can also in another way be used in a very positive way where some people I think see the world and they think, what's the point? I'm one person out of eight, seven, eight billion people. The world's lost its mind. People are crazy. What, am I, what is little old me going to do? That's one way to look at it. But I look out in the world and I, I don't like what I see a lot of the times. And But that, for me, I use as like motivation or an incentive to really do what I can. I have kids. I do not want to leave my kids in the world the way it is right now. And... I'll be damned if I just sit back on the sidelines and not, and not do something. And I think that's what this time is all about. I think it's a time where we're finally getting to get, at the very least, get like some clarity about what we could do, what might be our purpose. And I see this sort of transformation that's ensuing with us that can be challenging and uncomfortable and, you know, painstaking. Um, I see that as part of it, almost like the cosmos are gearing us up to, to, to go out there and to do our mission, whatever it is, or missions, plural, to the fullest. And as far as all the different fears go, fear of failure, fear of the responsibility, fear of your own power, all that stuff, I find that when I look out in the world, fear or not, I, I a lot, it fuels me to do my thing as best I can. For example, I woke up, I have this thing, not this, this is a whoop, my whoop. It records my, my steps, my calories I burn in a day, my sleep cycles. And every day I wake up and it gives me a kind of a score for how well my body's recovered. Green is good, yellow is not bad, red is bad. It's like you're, you're like almost gonna be sick. Like you're really, you're really stressed out or something. In the last two days, man, I woke up in the red. And I woke up today feeling very flat, very tired, very like, just uh, not really like, it would, it, you know, not really in the mood, you could say, to film a video. But I was just sort of messing around on my computer this morning. And I, I just, out of curiosity, I typed in full moon. 
and I saw a bunch of videos of warning, it's crazy moons coming, bet, you know, with this, all this fear. And I was like, you know what, screw it. Rain or shine, green recovery or red. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put something that I think is genuine and positive out there in the world, even though I'm not at my best. And I find that that's okay. I, I find that it's okay to do your best. And what, what I was trying to say though is like, kind of a case in point, I'm all over the place. My, my brain's not working f properly. But this sort of sense that even on my worst day, I might help one person. It allows me to get outside of myself and not be so, in, so consumed by my own personal anxieties and fears and things like that. When, when I can connect to a greater purpose, it allows me to kind of hover above all my problems and my own personal anxieties and things like that. So I ask you, my friend, maybe you're gearing up to do something that is gonna be like a contribution to the world in some way, but you don't have it all figured out. You don't know if it's gonna succeed and you have all these other fears, that, you know, things I've been talking about working against you, all this resistance. I ask you this, do you think you might help one human being? If so, that's reason enough. It's reason enough, obviously, for that person, and it'll probably be a lot more. It's also, I'll say, reason enough for you because it feels really good to help somebody. I remember years ago, I was living in Las Vegas, and I was, and then I'll finally wrap this up. I know the video is getting kind of long, but this is an important message. I was leaving the Starbucks earlier in the morning, and uh, I noticed there was like this woman this like older woman in the like kind of blocking the exit to like get off onto the main road from this parking lot. And she was like flagging people down and everybody was whizzing by her, ignoring her. And I just like locked eyes with her for a second and I was like, oh God, you know, something told me to see what she wants. And I rolled down the window and she was like, oh my God, help me. You know, and she spoke broken English. You could tell she was not from America. She said her car had broken down and she doesn't know what to do. She didn't know what to do. Even though it's like obvious you just call like AAA or something. She was like so flustered. I was like, all right, you know, so I pulled around and I was like, okay, let, let's work on this. And she showed me her insurance and she showed me this AAA thing. I, I, I helped her with that, but she didn't know her own phone number. I remember she was, she was so flustered. I was trying to call like on her behalf, but she did not know her. She couldn't, they wanted the information and she like, her mind went blank. She couldn't give it. So I had to sit there with her for like an hour, like calming her down and trying to get, to get her to like, 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 what can we do here? Let's, let's, let's take a breath, you know? Finally, someone, uh, finally I got a hold of somebody who agreed to come and, and she was just so grateful. She was so happy. I felt like a hero. That was one of my most, uh, that was the, one of the best, that was one of the times in my life where I felt the best like truly like what it means to be alive, what it means to be a human. Just uh, there's a pure, kind of like the thrill of a roller coaster as I was discussing in, in this other way. When you help somebody, there's a visceral feeling of like connection with the divine love that is so priceless. It is so worth it to be courageous essentially is what is required. Fearlessness is overrated. It's not practical. Courage is something we all possess. And if you can lock into a mission, if you can really connect with the fact that you might help somebody and then get to experience it, it doesn't have to be like with thousands of YouTube followers. It, it could be helping a woman in, like I did. It could be anything. Then I believe if we can start getting in the habit of living this way for, the greater, for a greater purpose, that is how we create this ripple effect. And the ripple effect is always so much bigger than we think. It doesn't have to be this tangible thing. The final thing I'll say, <laughs> it comes to mind, then I'll bounce. Out of this book I was talking about earlier with good energy, the author was, one of the things she was discussing was her grandmother passing. And she said the grandmother had stage four cancer and like not that long after, once she realized that she was, she was dead, but 
But, uh, you know, she knew she was going to die soon. And so did all the people who knew her and stuff. And she said there was one day when the, 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 the daughter was reading all of these different letters from all these different people from all walks of life. Uh, and just sort of basically saying the same things, how this older woman, this grandmother affected them, impacted them in a positive way. And the, the, the daughter was just mind blown at the impact, the ripple effect that you can't really see until something like this happens. One person, one life. Now imagine if that one person like you finds their purpose and has the courage to go for it and really step into their power and potential. You don't even know how powerful and impactful you can be unless you give yourself that chance. And if more and more and more and more people start doing that, I have no doubt this world is going to clean up because positive energy is integrated. It spreads, it exponentializes where negative energy can, and like fear can be very big and scary at the appearance, but at the root, it's disjointed, it's inefficient, it's not as powerful as it seems. I'm going off on a whole thing here, so I'll leave you with that, my friends. Some, some food for thought, hopefully you learned something in this video. With that said, I'll see you all next time. You have an amazing day, my friends, much love.